Hello, everybody. Hello. Welcome to Love Thyself. Good uh, advice. Uh, uh, yes, it's simply a, a. I'm guessing that it's a um. It's uh, a ratio story, uh, apparently. Uh, that's the words. Um, no, no words. Um, it's all dreams. about um masturbation. That's that's what it's about. I. Um, but it's set in the endless universe, and in the endless. I haven't played any of the Endless Universe games Neither for I ages. Because I haven't played the Endless they're... Universe at all. So. Well, it's one of those games, they're, they're really good, apart from the things they don't tell you, then you've suddenly lost for no reason. <laughs> oh, it's one of those. Okay, yeah, you haven't kind of... picked oh, up a random red crystal, and then three oh, years it's... later. Well, because they're strategy games. They're stuff like, um, all right, I'm just slowly building up um, forces so I can actually... You know, spread out and actually finally start getting the game. Oh, and it comes up with the Fnun have won a merchant victory. Who the hell are they? <laughs> <laughs> game ends. Oh, okay. <laughs> yep. Right. So it's like Civ if you don't meet the other players. Yeah. Okay. And your and, terrible uh, If Civ. I remember correctly, the Horatio are literally a species of clones. I'm getting that. And love thyself. <clears throat> Oh shit! Okay, this this is free on Steam right now. Um, at least the first episode is. There is another episode available. I do not know what's going to happen after this episode is done because let's just get started. Start. It's impossible to dis disassociate my story from that of Horatio, the first of our name. I'm a clone. Okay. First beings to travel widely between the stars who were known as the Endless. We know of no earlier form of intelligent life that moved between galaxies. Okay. They're the, turned off they're the, the music. Race, they're the race that leaves MacGuffins lying around. Okay, well, I've turned off the music, so there should be... I mean, if Courts would like to do the, the wooey uh, music, that should be going Niddly now, niddly now, niddly now, woo-woo, niddly now, niddly now. The history is glorious, but above all tragic. <laughs> Space, the stars and life itself, they are unable to master their own internal conflict. What remains now of the endless are strange, disjointed traces in the forms of seeds, of observatories, or of experiments, of cities and worlds, and perhaps, though not all of this is clear or verifiable, in the forms of other peoples. Think it's changed, it's changed, need different music. Na, 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 na. There you go. Many na, 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 star-faring na, na, civilizations na, 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 have risen to the fore. Some have fallen as well. Events in recent history have led to an explosion in the number of players on the galactic scene. One of these, undoubtedly a major one, is Horatio. I think, I think he's story time. Yeah. I, I, oh, I did say stop. No, um, probably best I to stop. I have to breathe occasionally, you know. <laughs> I mean, uh, there, there, there is the trick of cyclical breathing that you could learn that totally exists and isn't totally made up. Oh, dear. <laughs> uh, people are going to say to me, no, no, musicians use cyclical breathing. Mm, fuck you. Uh, <laughs> Once upon a time, Horatio was just a man, a simple gazillionaire. So it's an entire race of Jeff Bezos. <laughs> Maybe. One night, a vision came to him in the shape of a dream. It was a vision of an empire and eternal life. He left... Ev Clones aren't eternal life, just so you know. Yeah, it's uh, just... Oh, look, it's a copy of me. That doesn't mean that a, I'm not me. It's a copy of me without my experiences, thoughts and dreams, so just... Even with it, you upload your memories into it. It still has different experiences from that point onwards. Yeah. So it's, it's, it's not, not you. you. He left everything behind, venturing... It's, by the way, Netflix, that whole thing in Altered Carbon, which you never addressed, would have been a lot more, it would have been a lot nicer if you'd addressed that in the series at some point. I have not watched Altered Carbon, so I know from, I do not know from whence you speak. The whole thing's about backing up memories and that sort of thing, so that people can live forever if they've got enough money. But they download the memories into a different body. So it's not really, and the memories are just kind of recorded. But on a, on a weird disc thing, on a, a weird bit. Of, basically, it's a piece of it's an artificial piece of spinal column made from alien MacGuffin metal. Okay, so here's my problem with that. What happens to the you that is left in the other body? 
and this great, wonderful, they, eternal life. They don't really address that, even though there are people who turn up and do the utterly illegal thing of what they, I think they call a multi-sleeving or stuff, where they have lots of copies of um, active at once. Seems like a dream. Go to work for me, I can't be buggered. Go to our other job, I can't be buggered. Uh, all of them need to eat. That's why they And weirdly enough, they go, weirdly enough, they're, they're actually, the very strange thing, if you're poor and you die, mm. you can go on a government waiting list and when a body pops up, usually from convicts, they'll just pop your disc in it. That seems gross. But completely free of charge in America. That, that's what's the problem. Ah, yeah, no, that won't happen. <laughs> Wait a minute, this dystopian future has better health care. <laughs> and the way they do prison is they take your disc out, file it away for however long, and that's it. I don't even know if the people are sentient while that's going on, because if they are sentient, that is the worst form of torture imaginable. If they're not, then they don't even notice. They've so, done zero punishment, except everyone yeah. who love is now dead, except that they're, they're oh no, so like bodies. thirty years or whatever, you know. I mean, there's a bit where they're trying to get people's heartstrings because it was a, a, an older woman's body. I think she was meant to look older than she actually did. Um, <laughs> she looks like someone in their forties who was who was bent over and pretending to be old, um, who had an eight year old's um, disc put in her. We're well, considering that the eight year old was dead and this was free. Um, yeah, I, I'm. It's, I mean. It would be sad for the kids from going. Yeah, it's to... mean. It's it shit, would be but trauma. It's not as shit as being dead. Yeah. <laughs> it's gonna. It's... That's the thing. I mean, yes, trauma, but they, they eh. skip all these philosophical stuff, questions and stuff, and just go on to the bit of you know those rich people. Oh, they live fucking long now, aren't they, bastards? I mean, but, yeah, yes, they... but you don't need the McGuffin metal and the memory transfers for them to be bastards. I mean, the oldest one is only about 200 years old. So so not really that old. And they they're kind of seem to keep their money largely via compound interest, which presumably wouldn't be as much of a thing if people were mortal. Because someone would go, wait a minute, how does our economy work again? Yeah. Oh, I've... fuck, it's crashed again. And then, it, again, and that's the eighth time this week. Um, <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's... Uh... Okay, yeah, I see where that would be. Ah, I found oh, yeah, the right click turns, option. Oh yeah, and it turns out they've got cloning text being been um being perfected anyway. So, I mean, so, hmm. so rich people get to go in there and get copies of their new bodies of their old body, which is nice. Except for some reason, most of them seem to just go, "Oh yes, I'm going to clone my body to be exactly the same age as I am now." That's you know, convenient. always look, always going to look forty five. Really. That's your choice. <laughs> That's a bit random. Well, I mean, to be right. fair, I, I I was pretty good at sixteen. I'm quite happy yeah. to go back to sixteen year old me. I know, maybe wait a year or two afterwards, so the hormones don't don't suddenly peak up. Because imagine living I, for sixty years and then going back and doing yet the tail end of puberty again. I'll be honest. By sixteen, I was pretty much I, I was pretty much how I am now. Yeah, all my walls. Of us then. Mm. I, I apologise for my <laughs> superior genetics or lack of hormones. I just or... imagine your hormone system going, ah, I'll do it. <laughs> <laughs> your entire endocrine system just going, ah, wow. whatever. Wow, when I've met you, fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> hey, what's that mean? <laughs> what was the insult you would take it as? Well done. Oh. I just love the idea of someone's hormone just not giving a shit. That that's the reason that they've they've been anthropomorphized and just don't care. <laughs> oh fuck it off! Let's, fuck it! Let's just do more dopamine. Yeah. <laughs> that's it. Just uh, do you want to do? Do you want to do this puberty thing? I don't know. We could make more dopamine. Yeah. See what you did. I see what you're arguing with there, and I, I do agree. <laughs> Have you considered drugs? Uh, <laughs> anyway, left everything behind, venturing through the stars. Got strapped to a rock, he went... <laughs> Over the ages, he discovered many of the mysteries left by the Endless, and his knowledge and power grew. It's amazing what the richest ex creature in existence can get done. <laughs> he created his first sons and willed his empire into existence, a beacon of all that is brilliant and beautiful. He is also a narcissist. Yeah. Where's well, a trillionaire, of course he is. Mm. 
considering how you know the way that if you hoard money, that means other people don't have it and therefore can't afford food. So you've got to be a bit of a narcissist, True. really. Now the empire of Horatio flourishes, and the Horatio himself is immortal with the Ow. power to rival that of the endless themselves. Is it a MacGuffin that keeps him immortal, or is it actually just another clone in a hat that they say is the original Horatio? Some say they were living gods. They're dead now, though. For them. <laughs> I Some like say that. they were living yeah, gods. But now they're know. dead. <laughs> yep, yeah, they were living gods. Dead now. Though, while we thrive through our brother, our god, Horatio. Yeah, Horatio. Go towards the light, Carolan. I think I hear someone. Is it Horatio? Yes. The other clans in this band should be to count it today. Yeah. I know this is earlier than the original schedule planned for, but the schedule didn't plan for two patrol squads in the Heartland of the Empire to go missing within a month. What, don't you have any backup for that two squads? You have to go and create entirely new people in order to go and investigate. And Just... create them early. Yeah, that... that... Got to be honest, this doesn't sound like the most efficient Empire. Um... Just follow my lead and the procedure will be fine. If you do well today, you might be promoted to junior lab technician earlier than expected. Okay. I live in a tube. <laughs> I don't know what to do. <laughs> They're identical. It would be amazing, sir. All right, you're doing all the voices. Don't then. interrupt. <laughs> yes, voices. Yes. <laughs> Most of the process is automated. But can Charlie to some of the clone hatching sequences you've seen in class... The final steps will be done by hand. How, how do you mean by hand? Because I... you know, <laughs> we're going to get a cocktail stick and do things in neurons um, individually. <laughs> <laughs> there are procedures for which a computer cannot be trusted. You have to rely on steady Horatio judgment. Back to our specimens. You'll handle clone births A through L. I'll do the other row. Pick one and get to work. Okay, Can that's... you hear me? Yeah, but I wish I couldn't. <laughs> one moment I'm asleep and the next I'm alive. I'm the only one that speaks like this in a normal tone. That's oh, the internal monologue, that's why. <laughs> ah, my eyes struggle to adjust to the brightness of the room. It slowly comes into focus. There's a man in a white and blue uniform bent over me with a bald, elongated head and a look of concern on his face. Hello! God. Huh? Ah, you're awake. Great! I have a couple of questions for you. No, you cannot borrow money. <laughs> he shoves the small hollow pad he's holding in my face. It's very bright and I recoil slightly, groaning something. He starts flipping through the pages when the other voice calls out. Give me over, please. I need your help. The man looks for a place to put down the holopad, then realises outfits he doesn't have pockets big enough to accommodate it. Tagus F07, I'm talking to you. Get moving. Yes, sir. Coming. Yeah. He looks down at me and ends up putting the tablet down next to me. I'll be back. He trots away out of sight. Went the wrong way. I mean, to be fair, I'd probably go the other way to that guy. Yeah. <laughs> to myself. I struggle to prop myself up on one elbow so I God, can keep Mirrors must me. confuse the shit out of these people. <laughs> he stops at a platform some distance away which lies on which lies a naked man. Another uniformed man is standing nearby, looking at the side panel next to the platform. All three of them look exactly alike. Brothers? Okay, so you're a clone. You understand the concept of brothers, but not the concept of clones. Also, you can see the other clone tanks. Yeah. How can I help, sir? The uniformed man points at the naked form in front of him. Willie! This clown is faulty. The light's on, but it seems nobody's home. 
I try to make sense of all this. These people are clones of one another? What do you mean, sir? Well, it's obvious, isn't it? He can hear us, but he can't respond. Something must have gone wrong during the process. On the outside, he's fine. But his motor educational imprinting is flawed. The result is this useless hulk. What good is being beautiful if you can't make everyone proud? Um, I... Mm. Cloning vats are near perfect, but every once in a while, some part of the pipeline produces a disgusting abnormality. Let's take care of him and chalk him up as a total loss. Ah, so... Uh, That's ab sufficient. Yeah. <laughs> ab abnormalities, so like things in the genetic code that are different <laughs> and impure. Have you ever seen Rimmerworld? Yeah, it's that. <laughs> it's that. <laughs> uh, for those of you who don't know what Rimmerworld... Um, how to describe it. Red Dwarf is an episode where the uh, malignant narcissist went on and cloned himself and himself in female form. And then and then, well, then there was a got, planet 600 years later. Ship, he got shipwrecked um, on another planet. There you go. Um, with, no, with no intelligent life on it anyway. Um, completely habitable and everything. And... He uh, used a came with a cloning set for reasons. Again, and effectively. He, yeah, yeah. He tried to clone a female version of himself so he could mate and breed and mainly mate. Uh, to be honest, because he's Rimmer. Um, and and he it didn't went, do a lot of that in life. Yeah. First of first off, it went wrong as it did the next six times, and they made exact copies of himself, and it kind of kept going. Yeah. Um, he did actually manage to do some female ones that turn up at some point in history, but we kind of go with other characters. There's some black hole shenanigans that affects time, and it's centuries later when they land on this this planet, which is now known as Rimmer World, in which everyone is Rimmer. Yes. And and yeah. it becomes and, as horrific as you imagine. It ended up making this basically a shit version of the Roman Empire. That's because he was a fucking military uh, fanboy. Yeah. I mean, it wasn't any good at... He wasn't any... good at it. No, but... no. But I'd like to pretend he was. <laughs> My favourite bit is, is, is there's no sign of normalcy in these wretches. <laughs> yeah. After they showed bravery, cunning and um, offered to give their lives for their companions. Is there no cowardice in these wretches? So at least at least the Rimmers are self-aware. Yes. Let's take care of him and talk him out of total loss again. What do you need me to do? Get the chainsaws. Simple. Take his legs and run away. The man called Turgus F07 grabbed the unmoving clone by the ankles and looks at the, not the other clone. The latter has passed his hands under the clone, clone's arm and pulls him off the platform with a grunt. We'll put the body in a recycling chute. This way we get the nutrients back. Think of it as his way of contributing. Oh, that's horrific. Both of them tug and pull haphazardly, and before long, they're... I, I read that as painting. Um, they're panting. Hmm. I'm guessing they don't have any form of actual, you know, upper body strength, shall we say. Well, we can't at... afford to show weakness at this time. However... Everything and everyone is perfect and beautiful in the Horatio Empire. Can I just point out where their crotch is? Well, I think that's just his coat. And no, 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 no. That's, that's not coat. That is showing the bits well, we, of the bits fair, behind him. Uh, to be fair, I think they're aliens to begin with. Denied. Denied. <laughs> it's a kindness what we're doing to him when you think about it. I, I mean, if he can Compared hear you... To... That's, that's the thing compared to. Um, yeah. I watch as they come nearer and realise that there are about a dozen other men on the platforms. All of them are in various states of lying down or sitting up, looking at the grotesque scene with mild interest. Every single one of them is a carbon copy of the trio in front of us. I catch my reflection in a surface and suddenly realise I too am one of them. No! A clone of them. A Horatio. 
It's a good thing we caught this now, so we can fix it before the ceremony. Our records need to be perfect. Otherwise, we'll end up in a backwater station, decanting only he knows what. This is a small blessing, really. For you and me. I mean, for him, not so much. Trio passes in front of me, and for a moment my eyes lock onto those of the faulty clone. Far from being dead inside, I can see fear radiating from him. He knows he's going to be killed off because he's imperfect. I sit up and try to figure out what these tests are about. don't want to follow this guy in the recycling chute. Or, you know, help? I don't know. Horatio. You um, know, it's just... Every time I think about what a memory test entails, I come up with a blank. I think that's the issue right there. <laughs> I mean, fair. My, <laughs> my body's functional. I can understand what people are saying and think... But there's nothing of the memory implants they mentioned. I'm a blank slate. Pop him up while I open the shit. <clears throat> I Whee! gotta do something about this. I turn around and look at the clone next to me who's gazing with about with an air of studied detachment. Our eyes lock and his expression shifts to a scowl. I haven't done anything to deserve it, although I've been fidgeting on my platform. What are you looking at, substrate? I rummage from a good, for a good comeback. Your bum face. All of these guys seem to hurl perfection in high regard. I know what will shut him right up. I'm just wondering who's clone... That, that is a mighty bitchy response. Yeah. I'm just wondering whose clone you are. You Surely you can't be one of us. Takes him a moment, but eventually he gets it. He reddens and mutters under his breath. He definitely doesn't sound friendly. I realise we seem to be easily provoked and causing a scene might just be my way out. I pull my legs off the platform and do, and do just that when I catch something about to fall off. It's the hollow pad Turgus 507 has left by my side. Maybe there's some information that'll help me cheat my way through the test instead. What should I do? <clears throat> this is an interesting... They We've had three choices so far. Yeah, so so far this game that was released as an April Fool, if I remember correctly, yeah. um, has had more choices than the proper games, as it were. The proper yeah. games. Um... So cheat on the test or provoke a fight. I mean, provoking a fight might be funny because the way we'll do it is probably just to call someone a bum face. Yeah, fair. Let's call people or, bum face. Also, imagine them having fist fights for each other. Eh, 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 eh. <laughs> Provoking a fight. No time to investigate because I am Sir Thugs a lot. I put the holiday down on the platform, hop off and throw myself at my neighbour screaming. Yeah. What did you just say to me? He's taken aback by my sudden outburst and I land on a beautiful first slap. Oh my god, they're having a slap fight. And that almost throws him off the platform. I try to shove him onto the ground. He grabs him by the head, which is surprisingly effective because it's massive. And we both fall to the floor with a crash. We start swiping at each other with our eyes closed, grimacing and trying to protect our face from the blows. The other clothings are coming around us and chanting. That's your fight, fight, fight. Others are saying things like... Punch his ugly face. And... Show him who's got the best jeans. We're not hurting each other much, but it gets tiring quickly. Thankfully, the lab technicians arrive and separate us. We're both panting and sweaty, which is unpleasant to me, but it seems to be absolutely awful for the other guy. I win this round. That's enough, you two. You're going to mess up your pretty faces. Who will even look at you after that, eh? What are you even fighting for? This is it. Do or die. My opponent looks defiantly around and spits out. He was looking funny at one of his breathers. I told him to back off. Uh, oh, it's me. He called me a substrate. I clearly have the better genes. The lab technician in charge looks at Turgus F07 and snickers. Sort these idiots out. Are you going to let indoctrination now? We've got a fasty bunch. He leaves the room. Turgus FO7 sighs and pinches the bridge of his nose. 
Hmm, okay. Everyone line up against that wall. We'll do a quick assessment and you'll be on your way. You two idiots sit in the idiot corner and over there, over here, until we're done. You're clearly functioning and seem to have the exact amount of jealousy that you need. <laughs> I imagine the idiot corner is labelled as well, officially. Yeah. Absolutely. You should you should probably be tested for stupidity down the line. I'm sure you'll make a great first impression in indoctrination. Okay. Wee. My opponent seems annoyed. I'm doing my best to mimic his expression, but I'm secretly relieved. We passed the test. I sit in silence, my blood pumping in my ears, waiting until the testing is done and recalled away. Blup. Oh. Sometimes later, the assistant comes back. Thank you for waiting. I'm going to ask you to please head to wardrobe in the next room ever. We will find your station uniform. Anyone will do. They're all the same size, obviously. After that, you'll be directed towards indoctrination. This will be followed by dinner, orientation... And you'll be shown to your quarters. Now this way, please. The door to the next room opens and we step inside. Try to put a few people between me and my neighbour from the lab. I mean, to be fair, after a while he won't exactly know who you are. Yeah. There's a few tables at the end of the far room. Uniforms are neatly stacked and folded next to one another. We look at each other one uh, uneasily until someone steps forward and grabs a uniform, looks at it warily and puts it on. We follow suit. It's some sort of green jumpsuit with two deep pockets. It closes with a simple zipper in front. The uniform is pretty snug and the fabric, fabric seems sturdy yet comfortable. I notice there are pairs of light boots under the table so I take a pair. They're a bit tight. I put my hands in my pockets and look around me waiting for what's next. Wait doesn't last. After a minute another door opens. The assistant from before is holding his hollow pad and peers inside. Okay, um, well, normally there'd be somebody else to show you the way to indoctrination. We're a bit short-staffed at the moment, apparently. There's a grumble from my neighbour neighbours at this lack of decorum. I've lit up a path on the hollow screens. It will guide you there. Just proceed down that hallway to the concourse and follow instructions. Sorry about that. I shuffle out of the room and hesitantly walk down the hallway, hoping that I won't get lost. The others are following me, though at a distance. No one seems to want to take the initiative. They seem to be unfamiliar with our surroundings, but not with the layout of the station. At least none of us have to pretend. I think no one wants to be the one going down the wrong way and making a mistake in front of the others. I've seen crossroads twice and stuck to the path indicated by the arrow on the wall screens. So far, so good. I keep walking. The others follow. Am I going to be like lauded as like the hero of this situation because I have a, I can think of something else other than what the that everyone else can? Probably. Hmm. <laughs> just, just saying. Fair enough. Eventually, I hear a murmur in the distance, which grows to a distinct noise as I draw nearer. I see some bright lights in the distance and much more colourful environment. It is pretty game. Yeah. It's nicely stylized. Well, endless stuff is always pretty. It's always got quite nice music as well. It probably did have nice quiet music, but it was very loud, so I went, No! Yeah. <laughs> I stepped means, up... so, means hopefully they won't be able to do any weird gameplay stuff um, with this one. Uh, that actually ruins the game. Like either, you know, the aforementioned, you suddenly lose! Or in their fantasy one, called, I can't remember, remember what they call that one. It's another endless something because everything's endless. Um, but their fantasy one was really badly balanced because they tried to add in a diplomacy system. Unfortunately, the diplomacy system means the race that specializes in diplomacy, the dragon people, can literally say, no, you're not going to war. Ah. Th they generate democ uh, democracy points, um, diplomacy points just out of their ass. They go, no, you're not going to war with us. Yes, you will accept this trade deal. And stuff like that. So I see. Yeah. <clears throat> that is incredibly broken. 
I step out onto a plaza, a cathedral of green and gold. Very good. Good. There are columns and glass everywhere with manicured trees and shrubs in every corner and overhead an immense glass canopy. This must be the concourse. There are lots of other people here, all wearing the same jumpsuits as we are. Probably fresh new clones, just like us. Even my jaded brethren around me are all murmuring amongst themselves in tones of wonder and amazement, as if talking out loud might make the wonders fade away. Well, it's the nicest thing they've ever seen. I mean, they <laughs> don't have a lot to prepare it for. <laughs> yeah, yeah so, they're ten minutes yeah. old. Yeah. This way, please. The voice cuts through the noise effortlessly, and in a moment conversations go quiet. A Horatio has peered on an immense hollow screen inviting us to move along. There are more hollow projections in the hallways leading to, what was it, indoctrination? That sounds unpleasant. Nevertheless, I follow the crowd. We meander through the corridors for a couple of minutes before we reach, we reach our destination. Yes, we reach it. We reached it. This is a huge room covered in witch materials from the deep carpeting in the middle of the middle of the womb to the panelled walls. There are long rows of wide, comfortable looking seats all facing a wall covered with an immense hollow screen. Low columns form arcades and run along the, column, uh, the walls of the room. It's beautiful. It's not bad. <laughs> a Horatio in a red suit is standing with arms crossed on a low podium in front of the hollow screen. He has a look of studied annoyance on his face. Once all of us are inside the room, he speaks up. May I have your attention, please? The crowd falls silent. Horatio's are very respectful. His voice carries across the room, and even from somewhere near the entrance, I can easily hear him. I think it's less respect and more cowardice. But, you know, it's just, just, just the feeling I'm getting. I mean, please take yeah. a seat. Get all the way through the row. Don't just hog the centre seat. You'll hear me just fine from the sides as well. There's a bit of rush from the new clues to do exactly the opposite of that. Soon enough, a cluster of Horatios are sitting in the prime seats and preventing the rest of the file from moving. Oh, for his sake. Go around the audience and find a seat on the other side and occupy the back and side seats if necessary. I position myself carefully in a spot at the back. I'd rather watch what's happening and do my best to blend in. Horatio in the red outfit seems about to continue when another moves in from the shadowy arcades to the side of the room and climbs the steps to the podium. His feet echo softly on the green marble tiles. The red Horatio closes his mouth and deflates a bit. The other one is moving pretty slowly and from the envious look of my closest neighbours I can only imagine that's on purpose. He dismisses the red with a casual gesture of his hand and a smile. Red Horatio leaves the stand. With a grin, the second Horatio turns to us, his cape flowing in an emphatic demonstration that he's here and demands our attention. When he speaks, his inflections are slightly different. I surmise that he probably spends a lot of time speaking in public. Thank you, second-rate Master Sergeant Eccles B12. That'll be all. To each and every me, welcome to <laughs> Kappa Station, finest in the cluster. Your memory in Bran, in Prance, yes, in that's France. a word. It's a word, it wasn't a mistake, everything I do is on purpose, that is how it's pronounced. Do I not am cover intentionally the last... dumb. Do not cover the last couple of decades since the last backup was distributed among cloning facilities in this quadrant. Okay. Therefore, a lot of the information you know, and the things you know you know, may be outdated. This is a crash course of what has happened while you were sleeping. And I think we're going to call that an episode there. Bum, bum, bum. Da, da, da. Uh, bye bye, everybody. Bye bye.